This is Alan Ball. Hi, this is Audrey Fisher. This is Jim Perry. Hi, this is Kristen Bauer. Hi, this is Alexander Skarsgård. This is Nelson Ellis. Hi, this is Johnny Neal. This is Rayo Tucker. Hi, this is Lindsay Fulton. Hi, this is Ryan Clemens from True Blood. Hello, this is Theo Alexander. Hey, this is Lauren Bowles. Hi, this is David Tishman. This is Jay Zerber. Hello, this is Janina Gavonkar. This is James Frame. Hi, this is Courtney Ford, and you're listening to True Blood Radio. Hi, Liz and Mel with True-Blood.net here with this week's episode discussion of I Found You. We'll be sharing our thoughts, ideas, and general musings of the episode. And later we'll have some spoilers for the next next week's episode, as well as a little peek ahead at the series finale episode. We've got a little tiny bit of news for you. First, we got a couple of other news items that we really don't want you to miss. This is podcast number 223 for the week of June 29th. 2014. First up, this week some of the True Blood cast members have been taking photos from the set or just flashbacking to events they remember attending over the years as um, the production is wrapping up. Their last day of filming will be July 9th. So this is, yeah, just a little over a week from when we're recording this until they're done for good. They had the cast wrap party, um, the cast and crew wrap party was Saturday night, uh, the 28th, June 28th. So it's coming to the end, and they're feeling nostalgic, so they've been posting things on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Most recently, uh, Stephen Moyer, who you can find on Twitter at underscore S Moyer, he took pictures from his last day of shooting on the um, on the sets at Bill's house and Sookie's kitchen. I don't think it was his last day of filming overall, but it was the last his last day on those sets. So um, we've grabbed those for you. You can find them at true-blood.net. He's got some neat close-ups of different parts of the um the two sets that you may not have noticed before on screen which is pretty cool some just some you know different details and and knickknacks and stuff so um yeah go ahead and take a look at that true-blood.net and we'll keep you informed as other we'll keep posting as other people are posting things like that they're sharing it with the fans as they're wrapping up their time on true blood yeah well, speaking of Twitter, Dennis O'Hara sent out a bunch of selfies with True Blood villains of the past for a special being filmed for the final season. Now, we don't know if they're going to air that special actually towards the end of the series or if they're going to, if this is something they're going to include on the DVD set. Um, I, I, it would be cool if they did both. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the. The True Blood villains, I'd love to have that on the DVD set for for good mm -hmm. and all. Yeah, and who but, all was uh, it? It was um, Michelle Forbes, who played Marianne. Was, yeah. Um, um, Mariana. Clavina. Clavino. Yep, Lorena. And was it? I Let's think? see. Michael McMillian, Steve Newland, and Anna Camp. Sarah Newland. Both mm -hmm. Newlands were there. Anna Camp. Yep. Is yeah. that everybody? So it's like I'm missing somebody. Well, um, somebody mentioned why Marnie wasn't there. Um, I think she was busy being no, on stage. Fiona Shaw. Fiona Shaw, I think, is on stage yeah. in, on stage in London. So it may be like yeah. you know when they did the farewell to Bon Tom special, and they had some of the cast members um, on the couches chatting. Mm -hmm. There were actually two groups. If you look closely, yeah. there was actually two different groups of cast members. So, mm -hmm. and then they also interspersed kind of some one on one conversations with cast members into the special it it comes down to scheduling really um mm -hmm. so that was that's kind of what i'm wondering if there is going to happen with the the villains special as well if they you know these are the people that were available to all be in the same room at the same time and then they'll have some kind of one-on-one -on -one conversations with some of the other people that have been mm -hmm. villains through the years i hope so I hope so too. That that was fun. It was fun to see his tweets. Um, you know, getting back into character of Russell Edgington and greeting um, Lorena. Yes. Hit <laughs> back from back, back yep. from dead. <laughs> yeah, so, Anna Camp's Sarah Newland is the only one at the moment who is, has survived. So mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Long. Well, we were honored to be chosen as HBO's first Trubies of the Week as part of their fan appreciation campaign during this final season. They contacted us a few weeks ago to let us know that they had chosen us, and we were just tickled pink. 
Um, you can read our Truby personality quiz at truetotheend.com, which is it's formerly uh, Inside True Blood blog. Now it's truetotheend.com. And the somewhat accurate um, article is posted there. They misattributed a couple of things, which, as Liz said, isn't that big a deal since we share a brain. But, and they left a few things out. But um, overall, you know, it's, it's pretty accurate to what we said. I wish we'd had the questions ahead of time so we could think about them. Yeah. That was hard coming up with some mm -hmm. of those answers on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> that was tough. Yes, it was. It was. <laughs> you know, what's your favorite so, episode? They were, they were uh, fun. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, there's um, 73, mm -hmm. 72 of them. Let me think yeah. here. Out of 70, out of 72. Yeah, I, it's funny. It, it was, was fun though. It was, they were fun questions. They were meant to yeah. be fun. Um, you know, nothing so right. serious. So um, we mm -hmm. had fun with it. I mean, I, they, they told us we could make up answers if we wanted to as part of, you know, you know, being a um, an imaginary character mm -hmm. on the show. So Yeah, the whole, the whole premise think, is when the first question is, you're going to become a vampire, who do you want as your maker? We both chose Bill because we felt like he was more, um, he took better care of his progeny than any of the other vampires. Yeah. Um, it was more nurturing, I think, is what you said. Mm -hmm. So we chose him, but then from then on, each of the questions is is asked as though we are vampires, which that took me a little while to catch mm -hmm. on, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, because there was the there's the question of um, you know who would you want fighting with you against the infected vampires, and I was like, and we both we chose I took picked Suki and and Liz chose Jason, and then I'm like, wait, now we're dead. Because it's all humans against all these vampires. And, and oh, wait, no, actually, we're vampires, too, in this scenario. Okay, no, we're good. <laughs> it's, it's two vampires and two <laughs> humans versus, okay, we're going to make it out yeah. alive. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. And uh, this week's episode, Jason proved my right? point in that, which we can talk about later. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, Jason. <laughs> yeah, and then oh, so, I, that question of who would you hang out with? Boy, I mean, yeah. as, as alike as we are, as much as we, you know, we share, we do share a brain. If you ever want a solid, solid, um, solid evidence of how we're different, party animal, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> And they even cut out. You said you would go smoke a bong with Lafayette, and they didn't put that in there. I... <laughs> and I'm like, um, Eric could give me a firsthand account of all these historical events. <laughs> no, but really, that's that's actually, I mean, I know he's hot and everything, you guys, but seriously, he's a thousand years old. The dude's got stories. He's got stories. <laughs> Don't you think at this point, like all of the universities in the world are trying to get historic, you know, history professors that are vampires? Like if vampires have come out of the coffin and they have this access to these people that have been around when it was actually happening, they would be in demand. Yeah. I would sign up for those classes. Are yeah. you kidding me? I'd rather have that oh, than I would reading too. some dry textbook. But anyway, so yeah, yeah, it was total, you know, party animal nerd. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, is that I don't party that I know, much. I don't either, but, you know. You know, married with kids, yeah. you know, I don't, I, and, and I don't have the energy to do that. So <laughs> I was just trying to, she said to have fun, yeah. so I did. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can totally see you in Lafayette going out for the evening and, Yeah. Enjoying I, yourselves in fun. every possible way. <laughs> well, I sat fun. at home by the fire with Eric saying, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> we is who we is. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. We're not joined at the hip and all the No. <laughs> that is, Yeah. So, it may appear that way, but it yeah. is not the case. <laughs> All right. Well, we should probably go into our episode discussion. Let's do it. And because I'm.
that's why you guys are listening to us. But um, the episode was titled I Found You, and it started out with um, a pretty interesting scene. Mm -hmm. And... um, Pretty steamy scene between you know, it, Jason and Eric. It well, was pretty. So the title refers to Eric. Yeah. The title, because yeah. and he bookends the episode. The first, epi- the, uh, yeah, the first scene before the credits is Eric and Jason says, "I found you." And then the final mm-hmm. scene is Eric and he says to Pam, "You found me." So they, you know, they bookended the episode with him and made it. In, in my opinion, made it very clear that that's who the title was referring to. And now we found him and we'll go from there. But yes, that was, um, I know it was supposed to be the whole big shocking, daring scene that, I don't know, some of the, some of the reviewers were hyping it up, but it was true blood. Mm-hmm. I didn't even bat an eyelash on that one. <laughs> that was, yeah, it was <laughs> typical. Um, I don't know. I, typical true blood it's one of those scenes yeah it's one of those scenes that i just don't they don't i'm probably going to catch a lot of heat for this but i i just don't they don't interest me i don't really care i don't those are the kind of scenes that i just go okay well what's going on on twitter oh. <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was really interesting since it was jason's dream we get to see eric through his eyes basically and there was an interview with Ryan Quanton and Kate Barnell, who was the, the writer for that episode, and Harold Deutsch, who directed it, um, Entertainment Weekly, EW.com, and we link to this um, on, the, on the website, had an interview with the three of them about filming that scene. And they talk about that this is Eric through Jason's eyes and how they always felt like Eric looked up to Jason. and I mean, that Jason looked up to Eric and admired him and kind of was in awe of him. Um, and I think, I think it was Kate Burnell who said that they, uh, they thought that um, Jason would be a fan of James Bond and that Eric kind of personified James Bond for him. Mm-hmm. He was like a real life James Bond. And that's why they did the martini glasses. They had Jason, <laughs> uh, had Eric making the martini. So mm-hmm. it was kind of a little, little, a little inside joke on that, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And then, and just, you know, just the whole way it, it all went down and what they said to each other. I mean, for one thing, it's straight out of fan fiction, the things that they were saying, <laughs> which I think is amazing because it's yeah. Jason supplying the dialogue, you know? So there's, that's, um, I, now I can, I can so see him reading fanfic. Um, or making up his own, I don't know. But this was just, you know, it was a real, obviously the blood bond made it an erotic dream. But if you pull that part out of it, which I know a lot of you don't want to, but if you take that away and just look at what they're, what they're saying and how Jason is interacting and just, I mean, literally looking up to Eric and look looking at him with awe and admiration and... You know, it's, it's just, it's really interesting. It's really an interesting insight into how Jason perceives Eric. So that's my mm-hmm. slight, somewhat um, academic analytical read of that scene. Um, of course, it's steamy and erotic and sexy and all of that too. So then I guess they had a really hard time actually filming it because uh, Ryan was cracking Alex up pretty much every take. I mean, and you can see it in a couple of them. You can see that they're trying to keep it together, but, (laughs) but they, you know, the, the director said that Howard Deutsch said that most of the physicality of that is just, it's Alex and, and Ryan acting out how they think their characters would act in that situation. They just, they left it to them for the Mm -hmm. most part. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of improv there. <clears throat> yeah. So, well, so that was a. It was good. Jaw dropping in the way, way that you analyze it. It's yeah. It was good the way in the way you analyze it. But I. Not your cuppa. Was on, I just just on, no. I and it's not you know it's just because that's 
the way I am. Mm -hmm. I, I'm never uncomfortable with watching two people on screen buck naked having sex. No, it doesn't matter I'm never who it uncomfortable is. with that. I don't care who the couples are. I have never been comfortable with yeah. that. So, you know, shoot me down if you want to. That's the way I am. I don't care to see it, you know, played out in front of me. I don't need yeah. to. I have an imagination. And um, my imagination, you know, could probably go places that film will not. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad they didn't take it um, any farther than they did. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I was... I was fine with as, as much as they did give us. It's mm -hmm. not really my thing either, but, um, you know, I can. Which a lot of people are like, why do you, why do you guys even I watch know. the show? We don't like the blood. <laughs> we don't really. We're uncomfortable with the <sighs> sex. Um, well, you know, I, it, it's, the it's a well-written show and it's for entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the most entertaining shows on television. And Frustrating. It has been for six seasons. Aggravating so. sometimes. Huh? Frustrating and aggravating sometimes. Oh, yeah. But entertaining in the end. In the end, it, it is entertaining. But those are just, yeah, the blood and the, and the sex are not, that's not something that either of us enjoy that much in any, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't really like, I don't like I don't reading about Game it. I don't like watching it. Yeah, I have a real mm -hmm. hard time with Game of Thrones yeah. too. So. Yeah, I and I don't watch it. Yeah. You know, I understand it's. I don't knock it. I understand it's. You know, it's a good story, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. But I just, I prefer not to watch it. That's so. when. So don't yeah. hate. Game of Thrones. I I read all the recaps, and then then watch because yeah. I just I yeah. got to prepare myself. I can't do that with True Blood since we're watching it live with you all. But if I didn't have to be, if I didn't need to be they're watching it live with you guys. I would probably read the recaps first and then just to kind of prepare myself. But, but yes. Yeah. So, so, but it was quite a way to open up yeah. a, a episode, wasn't it? Yeah. And <laughs> you know, brought Eric back to the front and center and, and Jason falling off the pew at the end. Oh my gosh. It was funny. <laughs> and apparently there's like 20 <laughs> different takes of that. And they're they're hoping like to put that in, in together in a, in a blooper reel or something on the DVD so. of all the different ways <laughs> that Ryan so. woke up from his dream. Because I I love slapstick when it's done well. Yeah. And so that just I mean I was rolling. I, I don't even know I don't even know what happened next because I was well still the credits the credits that. happened next Tears. fortunately the opening credits. Tears running down. Well, that's fine too because uh, you know I'm over yep. that too. So. <laughs> oh, you guys, we've got fatigue. We have opening credit fatigue. Yeah. We've got bad things fatigue. Oh, yeah, I oh, yeah. It was a great song. I'm sure it still <laughs> is, but I'm over it. I'm over. She's it. over. Let it go so, too. Just I'm, FYI. Oh my gosh! <laughs> just let it go. <laughs> Let it go and mm -hmm. happy. Whatever. <laughs> Please. Whatever. I still have those yeah. on repeat. I know. <laughs> it's another way that we're Indeed. Different. Indeed. <laughs> Just overplay it and shove it in my face and I will hate it. Yep. So. <laughs> well, anyway. So, I mean, what happened after that? We had, um, I think, probably the most emotional scene for me was when when Suki and the others went to uh, St. Elise. Ooh. Well, I, before and we get there, I want to back up for just a minute. It, at Back at, okay. um, back in Bon Tom, they're, um, they're talking about the vampires and, and, you know, how are we going to, that the people have been taken and how are we going to find them? And Suki says, I found this dead body. Maybe we should check it out. So we get a little bit of that, mystery solving, you know, detective element from the books, which I, mm -hmm. I like. They're doing a lot of really thematic co uh, connections back to the books this season. I'm, I mean, it's only episode mm -hmm. two and I've already found a whole bunch. So they're doing some, th that's a thematic connection back to the books is Suki and, you know, uh, actively involved in solving a mystery again. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so then they, they find, they go, you know, they look at the body and 
try to figure, you know, she's, ugh, the animals have gotten to her, so her fingers are gone. Um, so, you know, there's no fingerprints. How are we going to find out who it is? And Jason, like, whipped out our wallet. It's like, one thing about, or something, what did he say? You, you don't, sometimes being, sometimes you don't have to be clever to be a good detective. And then and, mm. and he hands Andy a card, and Andy's like, this is a Starbucks card. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but, oh. he, you know, but still, he's the one that's like, let's just look at our driver's license. So points to Jason mm. and then some points taken away, but points to Jason. Um, <laughs> so they find out where she's from. It's yeah, always going to be much. that way. <laughs> And head up, head to St. Elise, and um, that's where we get the awesome pizza forensics technique. That is my new favorite police technique, investigation technique, pizza forensics. And he is what you went some for. Of these it. other shows, he, you know, he I sniffed know. it to make sure it wasn't bad, and he's like, ah. <laughs> he's just, no fear. Just <laughs> then, did you notice how he got rid of it? Oh, Jesus. He just like tossed yeah, it. Yeah, he just kind of tossed it. It's not your house, Jason. Done with Dude. that. <laughs> so funny uh, such a frat boy <sighs> he's so funny he is funny i love that guy <laughs> so um but anyway so sookie finds the dead girl's diary what was her name i know mary beth. said her name mary beth okay so mary beth's diary so mary beth and she starts reading the diary and this is where it gets pretty emotional because it's and you said it in the chat room it's sookie reading her, basically reading her own mm -hmm. life, you know, falling for Bill. She was curious. She thought how cool that would be. And she fell for him and all that stuff. And, and she then, expressed doubt. She um, said, I, I didn't, I, I didn't want to, or I'm fighting it or something, but my heart, basically the heart wants what the heart wants. And Suki experienced right. the same thing. Yeah. With Bill. With Bill. So, um, so then, and then they had flashbacks, which um, I don't recall that they showed mm -hmm. actually in the first season. They didn't show Sookie they getting didn't. ready that was new. for that night. That was new. And I, I yeah. was wondering, I was trying to look for clues that they had just filmed that. Or was that something that they filmed in season one and didn't end up using? I can't mm -hmm. tell. I was trying yeah. to look at Anna Paquin, you know, the shape of her face and and her hair and everything and trying to figure it out and I couldn't tell I couldn't tell so seamless work either way well, it, yeah yeah so it was just mm -hmm. sweet you know it was and it was a callback to a simpler much um more innocent time yeah you know um <laughs> simpler ish yeah. um a more um before all hell broke loose time yeah right for Suki. And, you know, it was nice to see that girl that Eric referred the to. The girl in the white dress, um, yeah. And the girl in the white mm -hmm. dress when he first sees her. So, you know, it was just, um, it was emotional. And then, you know, the progression and the horror that happened mm -hmm. and what she's going to do. And, um, and then them finding the pit full of, what, oh my gosh. the whole town. I did not see that coming. The whole town just all dead. That creeped me out. And that was horrifying. So, yeah, the pit full of dead yeah. bodies. I did not see that coming. Ooh. Mm -hmm. It was sad. It was, it, was, it was just sad creepy. to see those messages all around town. And then that pit full of, it was just a hopeless, hopeless mm -hmm. scene. And um, I don't know. I want to revisit Mary Beth and her story, though. Because this is something that I've been seeing, well, we've, we've seen cropping up more and more recently with fans blaming Sookie and then and the, the people of Bon Tom acting as the fans, kind of, saying, Sookie, this is all your fault. If it weren't for you, this wouldn't be happening. And here we have another girl in a town nearby who had a parallel storyline, maybe I mean, we don't know if she had any supernatural blood in her. It doesn't really matter. But for what, you know, she she fell in love with the vampire. And then somehow, I mean, so and then, and then her town was wiped out by the infected vampires. Was she responsible for that? No, that wasn't her fault. But it happened anyway. Was Sookie there? No. 
but it happened there first, didn't it? So right. this is right. not Suki's fault. She was targeted because she was born with supernatural powers. She was targeted because of her genetics. And that is, in my opinion, that is another connection back to the books and to the early seasons of True Blood, where it was an allegory for um, minorities being persecuted for, mm -hmm. you know, things that they were born with, for genetics. And here's Suki, who is being being persecuted for her genetics, basically. And that's not, mm -hmm. it's not her fault. It's not her fault that Sophie Ann knew that there was something special about her and sent Bill to find her and she ended up falling in love with him. That's not her fault. You know, it's not yeah. her fault that she's a telepath and therefore mm -hmm. the only person that she finally felt like she could have a relationship was a vampire because she couldn't read his thoughts. That's not her fault, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I thought yeah. it was an, an interesting way to kind of weave that into the storyline to say, you know, here's another girl that had a very similar um, path as Suki and horrible things happened to her and, you know, her whole town got wiped out. It's not her fault. And Al Seed then, yeah. you know, on the, in the truck on the way home, he's trying to tell her, it's not your fault, Suki. I know that this is weighing heavily on you, but it's not your fault any more than it was her fault. So mm -hmm. I, I wanted to make sure that we, we noted that, um, we also had quite a few comments of when Suki was reading the diary out loud, she read the dates and they, it started in mm -hmm. 2010 and ended in 2011. That's because it's only 2011. It's May 2011 in the true blood timeline. We started mm -hmm. Bill met Bill and Suki met in like August of 2008, I think late summer, 2008. Mm -hmm. um, the show premiered in September. 2008 if I recall correctly and and you know so yeah. they met late summer 2008 it's only been it hasn't even been three years yet in in Bon Tom and mm -hmm. I know for us it's been six years so it's kind of hard to remember that and we haven't had a lot of dates yeah. as touchstones to to help us out with with the timeline that's actually a project that I have been working on for a couple of years and it's taking forever because there's so much that happens but trying to trying to piece together the timeline um so so yeah this is this is um it's May 2011 in Bon Tom right now mm -hmm. so if that helps mm -hmm. give you a little a little bit of a tether as far as the time it's been less than three years since Bill and Suki met and this yeah. all started a lot, a lot has so happened. Fast. And that also <laughs> might help people understand the way these characters are behaving and reacting to certain things. Mm -hmm. They have dealt with uh, like five lifetimes worth of crap in less than three years. So maybe we yeah. cut them a little bit of slack. Yeah. It's been one thing right after the other, a rolling ball that hasn't exactly. stopped. So, yeah. Um, Anyway, all right. Well, what's next? So, Do we want yeah, to go? so they they go to Saint Elise, and the government has not provided any help, and we don't really understand what's going on. Sam had mentioned that he'd been on the phone, and they were basically on their own. That he had been calling various government offices for help with the the vampire problem, and was they, it's not coming. They're on. They're going to have mm -hmm. to fend for themselves. So, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. the government is not going to step in here. Um, yeah. Which gives us, this in my opinion, again, is a connection to the books with the post-Katrina timeline, uh, storyline. Yeah. That's where we're, we're kind of getting some of those elements in this storyline with this mm -hmm. sort of, uh, I don't know, post-apocalyptic isn't quite right, but it's post a post-disaster. Yeah. Disaster, yeah. No disaster really exactly. is coming. Exactly. So, so they're on their own, and now they feel know. isolated, mm -hmm. but they do have a little bit of, of information now because they went to St. Elise and mm -hmm. now they can, they can proceed and try to figure out how to rescue the people that are trapped in the Fantasia basement 
And yet, here's Arlene, who has a plan. A girl with a plan. Yes, because they recognized, she recognized one of the Hepfi vampires as being a mm -hmm. school teacher. Um, her kid's teacher. And um, Holly, in fact, her boys were taught by the same woman. It was Betty. And um, so they started to, uh, Arlene started to plead with her, to uh, speak to her, uh, the teacher in her, the woman that she mm -hmm. used to be. And um, oh, it, it was marvelous. What a, what a scene with uh, Carrie Preston. Right? Huh? That was amazing. You know? She was my, yeah, my MVP for know? the night. She poured it on. And I mean... <laughs> It wasn't so much the lines that she said as, you know, eventually when she realized that the direction she was trying to go in wasn't going to work, she had to, she, you know, balls yeah. to the wall. She switched it up. She went for um, it. Yeah. yeah. This is it. This is the way it is. Your life sucks and mm -hmm. it's going to end. <laughs> but you can do. How do you yeah, want to leave it? You can do something good. But. Okay, and, and she was getting somewhere, and Betty had, I, th I think it was also interesting that we were, we got to see that these vampires, these are not zombies, folks. I mean, I know we've been trying to tell you that, but now, these are not zombies. They have conscience. They are, they don't yeah. like that they're being forced to do this because of this mm -hmm. infection. Um, they, they don't like it. They're not mindless drones. Mm -hmm. They're not brainless they're, you know, just going on impulse. They would fight it if they could. And some of them try. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. these, you know, these. And she was kind of one of them, mm -hmm. too. She even stood up to the, you know, leader there. You know, we're not animals. Exactly. We are not, we're not animals. We're, you know, I mean, we, we, we can't fight what we, what we need. But we're not, we, there, that doesn't mean that we should be um, so base mm -hmm. about it. So, Exactly. Um, and that was, and I so, think that was important for us to, to see that these are still people too. They are, they're just, you know, afflicted with this terrible disease that's making them do horrible things. Yeah. Now you guys that watch the walking dead, tell me of one zombie on that show that, you know, has been this organized or vocal I'm or expressed, sure expressed any, um, <laughs> yeah. Remorse or, Yes, at what mm -hmm. they're doing. So these aren't these are um, not zombies. For, these are not. This is not The Walking Dead. Yeah. Please, um, it's not even close. Yeah. So um, this is a different animal altogether, and I liked it. Um, it's an organized band, mm -hmm. and they've got their they've got their gang leader who isn't mm -hmm. so nice, and and then they've got their conscience. You know, their Jimmy yeah. Crickets. <laughs> among them who they consider the, you know, the leaders consider the mm -hmm. weaklings, but uh, uh, they're actually, who knows? It could be what saves Maybe. them. I don't know. By what we saw what happened to Betty. So now what that's did happen? So she was, she, started, she was, she yeah. was drinking from Arlene's femoral artery so that the, that the other vampires wouldn't see uh, any bite marks and suspect mm -hmm. that Betty had helped them. But as she's doing that, she, she dies. She dissolves into goo. So yeah. so what happened? Yeah. Did the, did the Hep V finally overtake her? I mean, she was looking worse and worse, but she said it was because she, uh, excuse me, she hadn't fed and she hadn't been able to sleep. Be and I guess maybe that was too much. Maybe it just overloaded. Oh, now yeah. I have hiccups. Maybe it overloaded yeah. her system. And then, mm-hmm. Right, and then having to get that rush of, you know, blood from Arlene might have been too much, you know? I mean, yeah, but now, well, I guess we'll talk about that in spoilers. Okay, so anyway, so yeah, so now they're, they're, they were going to get help from Betty, but now she's a pile of goo, so what do they do? I don't know. Meanwhile, Nicole's back there having cramps. Mm -hmm. with with the with the baby who there's been a lot of discussion about whether or not Nicole and the baby both survived this and you know Nicole's only 6 months like 6 and a half months along so technically yes the baby would be viable if you could get it into NICU 
But also remember that this baby is half shifter. So I wonder if that gives it more of a fighting chance. Like, will it be stronger? Um, is the gestation period shorter? We don't know. But oh, yeah. I, I kind of get a feeling we're going to find out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do too. Like that baby's coming, yeah. I think. Um, maybe next episode. I don't, know. I don't know, but I feel like it's it's right around the corner, and we're gonna find out what's what's gonna happen with Nicole and the yeah. baby. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I saw some comments on I think Twitter, or maybe it was in the chat room, where some people were thinking that the scene in Fantasia's basement is just too it's getting too long, too drawn out. Um. It's only yeah. two episodes, yeah. guys. Um, and next episode, as we saw, we'll talk about it later. But um, there, it's things are going to be mm -hmm. different. <laughs> so, but I feel like they had to that they took that time for us to to show us um, the few mm -hmm. vampires and how they're organized. Now, here's a question that I have asked and nobody has answered me. I missed the scene where who had the whistle? Okay. Somebody said, look, she's wearing a whistle, and I missed it, too, and I, I, I rewound, even, and I couldn't, I didn't see it. I don't know what they were talking about, so okay, so help us out. We still don't know. Help us out. Tell us who you, who that was, yeah. and send us a screen cap if you've got one, because we both missed it, mm -hmm. I, and I didn't, I didn't find it even when I reviewed it, the scene, so. All right, and yeah, so I need help on that. Or, you know, maybe it was something that somebody thought was a whistle. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Because I, I, I was trying to rationalize, okay, well, if one of them had the whistle, why call them off like that when they attack Bon Tom, when they attack the group well, of Bon Tom? But remember, they their winning. leader said he was chastising one of his underlings, I guess, and for, for getting them into this mess, more or less. And he said, well, who knew that they would invite vampires to their barbecue? So oh, I think they right. were that's right. surprised. You know, they had gone in there to get supper and were confronted by a bunch of vampires, and they were not expecting that. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. think that might have been why whoever it is called them off. Okay. All right. Well, that makes sense then. So there's one of the differences between Bon Tom mm -hmm. and St. Elise. So these the people of Bon Tom were prepared. And so... In other words, Sookie's connection with vampires maybe saved the town? Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know. You know. It's complicated. I don't know. But um, interesting. So, all right. Um, after that, after we had... We have, yeah, we've got... So we've left them still in the dungeon. Okay, what yeah. other storyline we got to say? Oh, Sookie goes to Bill's house and asks if she were in, if something terrible happened to her, could he still sense her fear? And so that's, Sookie, what are you up to? Um, yeah. And he doesn't really answer her, but that kind of ties into Jessica and Adeline. So, um, mm -hmm. Adeline has had a little bit of Jessica's blood, so now they, they're they bonded, and mm -hmm. she can sense when Adeline's in trouble, and what do you know, Adeline's in trouble in the middle of the day, and Jessica can't get to her, and she is just, right. yeah, she, it's 1.29pm, right. she can't go outside. Because yeah. Sam gave, um, by, you know, by a suggestion from the pastor there, uh, Sam gave the townspeople something to do. Because they just needed to, mm -hmm. to do something. So he's having them clean up the bar. And, of course, that's kind of not a smart thing to do when you've got a bunch of hurting people in one place. And then you've got one. Vig it, all it takes is one uh, vigilante troublemaker to come in and start whipping mm -hmm. them up, which Vince did. He did. They're, they're all cleaning up. They're all sad. They're all feeling helpless, feeling hopeless. Feeling, Scared. You know, scared mm -hmm. and what do we do now and how are we going to get out of this are we going to live to see another day and this guy comes in and spills the beans about sam i saw it coming <laughs> i saw it coming 
And, and the next it, scene, it I thought it was just the NyQuil. <laughs> so now they've got a dog bear for a mayor. They got a dog bear for a mayor and the people don't like this. And, you know, he's taking his cue from, you know, um, Sookie, who, what did they call her? Danger like, whore. Um, uh, yeah. Um, but they called her something else. Uh, telepathic. Oh something. yeah. I don't, I, I don't think, know. They called her. I forget her. what it was. Um, yeah. And, you know, and then she mentioned, you know, something about, the attack on Andy's babies mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the only had one survivor and I don't know how she's all grown up. She was just a baby a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago or about a week ago. So they're aware. <laughs> they're aware that Ooh, things are going on. There's, there's a time reference. Yeah, there. that's true. <clears throat> so, um, uh, meanwhile, so you've got, you've got Holly's two boys among this group and Holly is with one of them. Which no, Adeline's, who's Adeline's with Wade. Who's who. Yeah. And then the other guy Rocky. is all caught up. Yeah. He's all caught up in what Vince is saying and he's mm -hmm. going for it. Yeah. Let's go on the, let's go on the attack. And, um, Adeline and Wade. Um, okay. <laughs> we have to remember that. They they run off because she knows where they're going because she hears. Yeah, them. she hears Rosie say, "Thinking, I know where there's guns mm -hmm. at the police station." Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, she goes over there to try and talk uh, Kenya to Ke Kenya to um, you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I couldn't for the I life just... of me figure out who people were talking about when they were referring to Rosie. This past week, there was oh, a, yeah. there's a, in, in, a we, we did a breakdown. We did screen caps from the weeks ahead preview and there's one where Sam and Sookie are embracing and Sookie is weeping and Sam's looking distraught and somebody's, there were two different people, one on Facebook and one on our site who said, no, that's Rosie. And I'm like, I mean, it, I, I literally, I took a day before I responded <laughs> And I could not figure out who they were talking about. And I was like, mm -hmm. and finally I did respond and said, who the heck is Rosie? <laughs> She's the dispatcher who was Kevin's girlfriend. Who's been in just yeah. a hand. I mean, this is the most we've ever seen of her, to my knowledge. She's had mm -hmm. a couple of lines and a handful of episodes and that's it. Now she's actually, you know, front yeah. and center. But no, I had no idea who she was. So, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, so, so don't feel bad. <laughs> anyway, they go and trying to defend the room with the guns, you know, and but you know the gang gets there, and of course they convince Kenya to to turn on um, Adeline and mm -hmm. Wade. And um, meanwhile, Jessica feels all of all of these emotions mm -hmm. from Adeline, and she can't do anything. And then Andy comes yeah. on. Yeah, Adeline revealed herself too. At the at the yes. sheriff's department, at the sheriff's office, when they were coming for her, and she, there were some of you in the chat room going, "Don't do it, don't do it," but she did it. She very fireballed them, which didn't do yeah. her any favors. Now they're freaked mm -hmm. out about her too. Yeah, but you know, honestly, I don't think she knew she could do that. I that was yeah. The first, I mean, she didn't. She didn't knew no she could. do I think that. it was like when Sookie did it. It was like, what just happened? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, oops. What was that? Surprise. So, uh, uh, that, that was cool, but bad yeah. timing. Probably not the best time to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, now you've got a bunch of scared, crazy people armed. Mm -hmm. And one of them's Maxine. <sighs> I'm mm. kind of wondering if she makes it out of this alive now. I'm having yeah. my doubts now that she's got a gun. Yeah, that seems to me to be like, well, that's it. You're dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Scary. Scary. Hey, one thing that we didn't talk about was just the bite mark. She had bite marks on her uh -huh. arm and they were not healed. Yeah. That's the bite mark from when she gave Adeline a little bit of her blood and it hadn't healed yet. So yeah. is she, is she infected? Ooh. Well, she doesn't, she doesn't appear. But we to didn't really see, I mean, her, apparently it starts on your chest. 
like the first evidence is on your mm -hmm. chest and her dress was kind of the neckline was kind of high so i don't or maybe it just hasn't gotten that far yet i don't know maybe that's maybe. like the first sign maybe yeah is that she's not healing maybe. so so maybe jessica and eric I are both don't. infected yeah i don't like that yeah well i mean it's certainly um incentive to find the cure as if they didn't already have yeah. an incentive now they really do because mm -hmm. it's people close to them yeah again this is only the second episode mm -hmm. guys so you know nothing's nothing's over till it's over and here's what i kept thinking we still haven't seen neil yet that's right neil, neil. yeah and i have a feeling that he's going to have something to do with the cure. i hope so he and Suki, maybe he and Suki. Well, and we've got Adeline. two fairies, right? Yeah, we've got Suki with a little bit of fairy blood, and we've got Adeline, who's half fairy. Mm -hmm. So th there's got to be something, especially about Adeline's blood, that mm -hmm. is the answer. There's got to yeah. be something there. There's got to be, got to be. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> I feel like I feel like this is all going to get resolved because they will come out with a cure. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know when. They're probably going to make us wait for it. But Yeah, of course they will. We have to have the drama that happens in between. Of course. So, because, And that takes us to that final scene yeah. where Pam arrives. I think it's a monastery. I think that's, I think that's why she's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, she, she arrives um, at a location in the Rhone Valley in France. And as she's descending the staircase, she encounters some half-dressed girls speaking French and saying, he won't take my blood, and they don't really understand why. And then there's Eric in the Pam's face. She sees mm -hmm. him, and then she starts to cry. Yeah. And then we, and he says, you found me. And he's all lethargic, and you can see the veins in his chest. Yeah. He's, he's infected. He's infected. And, I don't and know. the universe blew up. Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, I don't I don't think they're gonna kill him. They'll find the cure in time. Mm -hmm. But it reminded me a little bit of Godric there at the end. Mm -hmm. Um when he had decided he was just tired of living. Mm -hmm. Um he you know, he was ready to meet the sun. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Eric's attitude reminded me a little bit of that. And then again, in the preview for next week, mm -hmm. I just kind of felt like that was, he was just kind of like, I'm done. I'm, you know, I'm, too much, I'm done too living. Much, <laughs> too much loss. My yeah. sister is gone. My father is gone. Um, yeah, it's too, too hard. Too yeah. Hard. And he can't fix it. Right. There's nothing he can do to yeah. No, that's still the biggest thing is that he can't fix it. He's Eric. Yeah. He should be able to fix it. He's strong. He's warrior. Mm -hmm. But he can't fix this. And um I I think it's just it's just too much for him to handle. But uh buck up, Eric fans. He ain't dead yet. No, I don't I'd... think I don't think Pam, he's gonna be. No, nah, Pam's not gonna let him go without a fight. So no, you know Pam. Fear Come not. On. This is Pam. She's gonna slap him around. Exactly. Exactly. She's gonna, she's gonna get up in his face and say, "Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get up off that couch." And <laughs> let's go, go find a James cure. Brown. Get she's up gonna... off of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> And she's gonna. I'm gonna be thinking about that. <laughs> we watch next week's episode now. So I'm gonna be thinking it's an emotional episode. Cape. I'll be laughing. <laughs> she's gonna have her sequin cape. Get up off of that thing. Yeah. Oh, so anyway, <laughs> she'll she'll. Uh, it's not over, guys. Gosh, we've had people. We had people come on and say they're done. We're not watching anymore. Really? Okay. See you next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know he'll be back. Come ah, on, it's only been two episodes. They don't like the way he's going so far. Really, this is, been, this is the start of the seventh season. It, they always give us drama. Always. 
And we, we always, always we get these comments after pretty much every episode. I'm done. I'm never watching this again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See you next week. Yeah. The you same can't fool us. <laughs> and they say the same thing. I'm yep. done. All yeah. right. Yeah. You can't fool whatever, us. Whatever makes you feel better. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so <laughs> um, we had Letty May. Uh, oh, yeah. Hurting herself to, to get uh, blood. First, she went... To visit Lafayette. And he was and having she, none of that. It's like, oh no. It was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. But Lafayette being Lafayette. But he's, no, I'm done with that. I'm not doing that anymore. Um, he's just too skeeved out by that stuff. Yeah. And so, by that we mean channeling Tara. Yeah. 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 So, um, and Letty May, of course, you know, storms off. She realizes that it's going to take vampire blood. It was in her V state that she claims that she saw and heard Tara. Mm-hmm. And now we see what happens because she got blood from, um, from Willa. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that she... That was a weird hallucination. It was very strange. It was like this whole kind of Messiah slash Eve thing. Yeah. You know? I, it was boy, weird. What was now that? somebody, somebody, I think somebody in the chat room broke it down to be, if this is Letty May's dream, her being a Christian and, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, and, you know, the biblical in the symbology. Body. Yeah. Right. So that's why, you know, it presented itself like that, which made sense to me, you know, so kudos to whoever said that I'll have to go back and sorry, I don't remember who it was, but um, a clever Truby yes. who uh, broke that down and um, it made sense to me. So, yeah. but if, but if I she's, wonder, it's well, I, I thought it was interesting that, that the the symbolism was combined, where Eve, who is the you know original sin, was is attributed to her, whatever. Uh-huh. But there's the you know the Eve symbology, but then there's also the the Christ crucified on the cross uh-huh. symbology. So Letty May views Tara as her savior. Getting yeah. Tara's forgiveness is going to save her, is going to release her, and 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 yet she also kind of blames Tara mm-hmm. for what went wrong. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's that's kind of where my mind is with that. If you guys have mm-hmm. other ideas, and you know, maybe there's a religious scholar out there who could help us out. Yeah, as well. That's just my, um, you know, I have I have a degree in English lit, but I didn't really do a lot of religious studies with it. So. Mm-hmm. That's my, my church background plus English lit. Yeah. Kind of merging together. <laughs> we'll see. <you. laughs> so, um, yeah. uh, anything else that we want to touch on that we want to, uh, I think we hit all of the, of the storylines, didn't we? Yeah. I think I'm so. Sure we did. There aren't mm-hmm. as many, thank God. Yeah. So it doesn't take as long to, to talk about everything or mm-hmm. we can go more in depth. Remember right. we were lamenting how in previous podcasts we're like, we're trying to keep it under an hour, you guys, but if we're going to talk about everything with any sort of substance, it's going to go way over. It's going to go way over, but so, so far we haven't had to do that. So, um, uh, yeah, I think we could probably um, move on into spoilers. I think so. First, though, I wanted to remind you guys that if you love to read, but you can't find the time in your busy schedule, you should try audiobooks from Audible. They're a sponsor of our podcast, and they have thousands of titles to choose from, including all 13 Suki Stackhouse novels, plus the short stories, so you'll never run out of books to listen to. You can visit true-blood.net slash audible for a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook of your choice, and that helps support the podcast. When you do that, we get a little bit of a kickback from them when you sign up. That's true-blood.net slash audible. Now we're right. into spoilers. So now we're going to go into spoilers. And if you don't want to be spoiled, go ahead and turn us off and shut us down. We'll see you next time. And thank you for joining us. And uh, But if you do like spoilers, which is most of you, we're going to talk about next week's episode just, just briefly. We didn't get a whole lot on the... Um, episode description but we're also going to talk about the final episode which we got a title for 
The final episode right now is titled Thank You, and that could change. Mm -hmm. It's been known to change. They've been known to change that up in the past. You throw out a title there, and then when it comes close to, you know, like the penultimate episode or before, a couple, maybe one or two episodes before that, they'll come out with the final um, title of Mm -hmm. the episode. But so far, it's called Thank You. And they're also going to be casting again for a young Tara, about 10 years old. And um, I guess she's going to, this is for the final a scene, a flashback scene in the final episode. Mm-hmm. Between Tara and Suki. Yeah. And um, so I, you know, I, we thought that they had cast young Tara before, but something must have happened. To, Maybe there was didn't. a scheduling conflict or... Might have been, I don't, I don't know. know, whatever. But so anyway, they're casting her again. And then we got a little bit of a tidbit on a kind of a background character that is, we're not quite sure if this is for reals, but um, they're said to be looking for a Caucasian, 30 to 45 years old, good looking guy will play the husband of the, of the quote, the actress on True Blood, unquote. Um, mm-hmm. and they want someone with the same looks as Jason, Sam, Eric, and the rest of the cast. Which, so <laughs> that doesn't sound can you be like, more specific. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't really sound like, um, casting calls that we've gotten in the past from that, you know, have come from, you know, the, the people, the HBO, the true blood people. Right. So I don't know where this is coming from. We are going to keep an eye on it as it develops, but yeah. for right now, I would take it with a grain of salt, maybe, or half a grain. I don't maybe. know. It, yeah, I mean, it's coming through the same uh, pipeline as we normally get this information. It's coming through the same sources, but it just feels like the way it was written was just off <laughs> from what we normally see, and. Yeah. I don't know if they're just messing with us or what, but something to note is that this is for a background character, meaning they're basically a glorified extra there. He probably will not have any lines, but he'll be featured. So like, we'll get a close up of his face. Um, So he's, I don't know. We're, we're kind of speculating that this might be in a flash forward Mm -hmm. towards the end of the finale. When we see, you know, what everybody's doing in the future and he's the husband of, I don't know who they consider the actress on True Blood. Um, the, of, of course, your first thought is Sookie, is, you know, Anna Paquin as uh, Sookie. But uh, I don't know, 30 to 45 years old, good looking. Um, apparently, they would like him to be either tall or average, blonde or brunette, built or not so. I mean... <laughs> It's pretty general. (laughs) (laughs) Looks like Jason, Sam, Eric, and the rest of the cast. So, um, anyway, good looking, I think is what they mean. Mm -hmm. But he's, um, yeah, so he could be Arlene's husband. Um, Somebody said, what if it's Jane Boathouse? I don't know. Could be. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know why they would call her the actress on True Blood, but it could be. Um, I doubt that it's like Adeline or Jessica. I think they're probably too young for those, for yeah. that age range. Um, I don't. I don't know. We'll we'll wait and find out. But yeah, we'll bring you more information as we get it mm-hmm. on that. Right. But this is this is not a major role. This is somebody that we're going to see kind of in the background. Mm-hmm. All right. So that was the is a little bit of information about the season finale. Now about next week's episode, episode seven hundred three is titled "Fire in the Hole." And right now, as of this recording, we just have a really brief uh, description. We should have the full description here within a couple of days. And the 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 brief blah, the brief description is hooky. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Let me try that again. <clears throat> Sookie hatches a dangerous plan, and Pam looks to motivate Eric. So um, I think we got a tiny glimpse of Sookie's plan in formation when she went to Bill and said, if you can hear me, you know, can you still feel me in danger? Mm-hmm. And this goes, then they released these episodes, or these, this, that preview of uh, 
the clip of Sookie and Bill in the car way in advance. That's apparently now that's episode three. We thought it was episode two we talked about in last week's um, podcast, Mm -hmm. which we know is late. We're sorry about that. Um, But yeah, so this is Sookie and Bill will be in the car and he says, you need more of my blood for me to, if this is going to work. And, you know, and she's like, I have a boyfriend. So, but not (laughs) not for long, I don't think. Yeah. I don't think so. Because in the preview for episode three, that's when Alcide goes to Bill's house in the, in the night in his track pants and kicks the door in and is pissed off. Mm-hmm. Where is Sookie? I can smell her. So he's, I think, I don't know. We talked, we talked about this a little bit where we think he may not make it past this episode. Yeah. Not I don't think he dies, but I think he breaks up and moves. He breaks up mm-hmm. with Suki and moves. Yeah. Um she may come home to an empty house. Mm-hmm. I think, note I think it's table. over. Yeah. I think it's over. So, um I well. I've kind of felt like that kiss between them in this week's episode was her goodbye. Yeah. That that could she be. she knew it was a bit more on her end from I may not survive this night, so mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Um, Pam looks to motivate Eric. That's her, you know, get your butt out of that chair. Let's go find you a cure. (laughs) She's, I'm looking forward to what Pam has to say and how, and how Eric reacts. We'll see if she can get a rise out of him. You know, it's going to be good. Yep. You know, it's going to be good because she's going to have to, she's going to have to say something pretty strong to, to, to pull him out of his funk. Yep. And, you know, she's she's going to be mad. She is going to be pissed off, I'm thinking. Him just giving up? Yeah. She's mm-hmm. going to be furious. She's going to she's going to un- she's going to unleash that Pam verbal tongue lashing on him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which I love because that is another that would be another callback to the books. It would indeed. Because Pam Went off on him a few times regarding Suki. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And his, his behavior in certain instances. So, mm-hmm. yep. Yeah. So, that would be fun. Fun to watch. So, so, also in the preview clip, we see um, the the group from St. Elise. Um, we, see, we see Andy and Sam and... Uh, I'm... I'm mixing the real name with the character names now. Um, Andy and Jason. Sam and Jason. Yes. They are confronted by the vigilantes by Vince and his little posse and they shoot. And it looks like Sam goes down because then Vince says, Oh, I'm, I'm the mayor now. Um, you guys, we've seen pictures of Sam and we've seen him in footage past that scene. So that's why I didn't freak out. Um, yeah. that's yeah. Don't worry about Sam. He's going to be okay. But if they're willing to fire on their own townspeople, I wonder if that's going to wake up some peop- some of Vince's followers to just mm. how out of control he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. He's a bit crazy. Yeah. Got to watch out for him. So, yeah. Um, a lot happened. We also saw a scene of Lafayette passed out. Lafayette and James, mm-hmm. like, the day after their mm-hmm. bong session. And... Lafayette is passed out and James can't wake him. Yeah. Now this is after Letty May's been there too. Mm -hmm. So this is, that was the day after. So this is the night. I don't know. Well, I I don't know what's going on there. Is he in a trance maybe? Oh, could be. I don't know. I don't know, but. (laughs) And then Pam Mm -hmm. says to Eric, um, did you, did you infect yourself on purpose? And then there's a, an edit, there's some dialogue that's cut, and then he says, it, the fight's over, Pam. So, mm. you know what, the, the bit that they cut out in between there, I think is pretty important. So, don't, don't be freaking out, you guys. I know. They're, they're manipulating you again with their, mm. their previews, but mm-hmm. um, that's going to be, I think that's going to be what sets her off, is when he mm-hmm. says, the fight's over, Pam. Mm-hmm. Look out! Yeah. Yeah, you're in trouble now. <laughs> she's gonna, 
She's going to unleash the Pam. That's right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's going to be an awesome and wondrous sight. Yep. I'm looking so. forward to it. And then that should bring us back, bring old Eric back to us, right? Mm -hmm. Real, Like real Eric. We should get yeah. real Eric back. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he'll still be infected, but they'll be looking for a cure. Whatever it is that she says to him. Mm -mm. Yep. Yep. It'll, it'll pop them back. So all those people who said they were done, they're going to miss all that. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's what we could pull from the preview clip, which is posted at our website, true-blood.net. So be sure to go on over there and check that out, as well as the song list from the episode this week and more pictures that HBO sent over for us mm -hmm. for to share with you guys. So... Um, that's going to be it for our show this week. Don't forget to bookmark true-blood.net for keeping yourselves up to date with all the latest and greatest. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at trueblood.net. We are very active on Sunday nights during the uh, viewing of the episode, and there are a lot of people having a lot of fun out there. So um, uh, find us also on Facebook. A lot of chatter going on there. We've got convenient links posted in the sidebar on our main page and thank you guys all for hanging with us this week we also want to thank minda for editing our podcast um she was on an epic road trip last week that's why the uh episode from last week is delayed um it should be out before you're listening to this but we know several of you are asking and that's where that's what happened is minda decided that she was going to ride her harley um, like 1600 miles in a week or something like that. I think, actually, I think that's wrong. I think it was more like 3000, but she can set us right. Um, you can subscribe to True Blood Radio. No, you can't subscribe to True Blood Radio on iTunes right now. I'm still figuring that out, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm still trying to figure out what's gone wrong with the iTunes subscription, but, um, I'm getting closer to getting that sorted. If you have an idea, feel free to contact me. And you can, but you can also listen to us on Stitcher at stitcher.com slash trueblood. And, of course, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact us at webmaster at true-blood.net or tweet us or send us a note on Facebook or leave a comment on the website. We are everywhere. <laughs> and we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.